Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. So, guys, I would encourage everybody to subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet to Hearts Ohm. That is our newest channel. We were talking over there this morning about exploring the astral realm. Is it all in your mind? And again, the mind is not the brain. And yet the mind is not the self. Ah, Lots of good stuff there. Yeah, absolutely. This is where we go deeper. And, you know, I guess um, I, I realize time and time again when I look at comments that often, you know, people don't understand that we have the three channels. Uh, it depends on where you're watching us from. Again, if you go to Patreon, uh, you can support us on Patreon if you so choose to for as little as a dollar a month. Uh, or you can just simply go ahead and subscribe on Patreon, get notifications of every video that we make. And the ones that are Patreon only, you wouldn't be able to see more than a 30 second clip. But all the other ones you can watch from Patreon as Patreon has their own server. So we upload over there everything. So again, we want to thank all our supporters over there. And MM is our newest supporter. Thank you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. So there's so much distortion in this world. And we were talking about that in this video. How, yeah, you know, there is not a single belief system on the planet that hasn't been affected by the dark side and their agenda. Not one single belief system. Now, you know, again, it doesn't mean that uh, they're all <laughs> darkness and uh, irrevocably contorted and distorted to where we can't sort through and find what is the truth. The, the Gnostic point of view is more diverse than what you'll find on <laughs> most of your searches on uh, Google or whatever search engine you use. Uh, as we see this little statement, archons are psycho-spiritual parasites. Ooh, absolutely. You know, again, we, we live in a world that is given to us by uh, the power structure that the Gnostics uh, looked at as archonic. And archons, you know, who are these architects of the dark matrix? Because that's really what we're talking about. Now, you know, the reality is, you know, these beings are are diverse. There's many different beings taking part in this uh, dark matrix construct. It's, it's, again, as above, so below in the sense that we look around and you see insects, you know, like ticks and leeches and things that live off of other things and they require mosquitoes GMO or other. yes all of these bugs are more of an injection in into our realm and many times uh when we work on people they're just not feeling well they might feel exhausted or they're in a dark place or something's just super gloomy in their life and things are not going well you know a really really good saging and a cleansing and it's like they feel brand new they feel like they've taken taken a, a just taken a shower they feel awake they feel light they feel alive and it's because as we walk along in this life if you're one that is has a particularly bright light well things will release off of their feed and they will attach to you and if you're unaware you don't know to go home and do what it takes to cleanse yourself so we see that a lot and it's not that anyone is bad it's not that you're bad at all it's just part of the world that we live in and we need to understand what we're dealing with absolutely <clears throat> so does this mean that all archons are non-physical uh no yeah we have all different densities going on here and and this does extend in into what we would call the astral realm as well as our physical uh, realm. You know, there's distortion everywhere. So when we look to the archons and the earth, and I, you got to love this, don't you? <laughs> That's really cute. So when you look uh, to some of the stories that came from the Gnostics, and again, the Gnostics were all about gnosis. And so 
they viewed Yeshua Jesus in a different light than, uh, well, fundamentalism uh, views him. And, and what's come out of ultimately the Catholic Church, because, you know, again, there's so many different versions of Christianity, but really the roots are all pointing towards Rome. <laughs> and, and again, it points towards uh, Constantine. And it points towards the Council of Nicaea and the subsequent councils. There were many different branches of Christianity out there. And, and we've uncovered over 200 different Gospels, which many people don't understand. They might not understand things like when you look to the Old Testament and the book of Isaiah. If you really ask the scholars who wrote the book of Isaiah, they'll tell you there's three different authors. And it's put together over hundreds of years, hundreds of years. And many of the prophecies, again, are after they've already been fulfilled, written down. <laughs> it, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of a little bit of knowledge can lead one straight off a cliff. And thinking that they're making a, a rational good judgment on the, the construct of the reality that we have. But no, you're actually listening to the archons. And yes, there are archonic forces in that root arch, like we have an arch angels and, you know, archaeology. And we could go on to all sorts of different ways to look at this. It's, it's all about, again... Well, what's the symbol in Freemasonry, right? It's, it's all about the architects. There is a true architect of this whole reality. There is a being that has constructed this entire reality, which is not malevolent, which was intended for benevolent uh, in reasons. And it was all about learning and growing and experiencing in a non-judgmental way. The archons, these entities, these are nothing like the uh, creator. And it's even in the Bible where Yeshua will confront the religious structure of the day and say, you know, your God is not my God. Just that simple, because his God wasn't what we would call uh, Yahweh or Yaldabaoth, your or anything that has to do with this archonic force that's on the planet. As y y the real true historical Yeshua was more of what we would call somebody with um, the philosophy of the Essenes, and the Essenes purposely removed themselves from society because they recognized society even in that day. It was the beast, quote unquote, system. It was the archonic system. It was a dark system that was basically living in a parasitic manner off of everything on the planet. So they removed themselves as much as they possibly could. They did interact with people, but, but they lived outside of the cities as much as possible, wouldn't travel to the cities unless they really had to. Uh, because they wanted to keep their frequencies high. And they were waiting for a teacher of righteousness to come. And, and, and in reality, a, a series of teachers of righteousness. Because, again, it's not just one being that decides to come down here and shift the perspective, shift the frequency of the planet, tries to free the souls that are enslaved to the archonic system without even realizing it. There's been many 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 different beings that have done this i think that's really really important to point out that uh, jesus yeshua so many people think that you can only believe in him and it has to be him and you have to sign your soul over to him and that's just not the case he he was a is a magnificent teacher he is a master he is someone who oozes just love and kindness and gentleness but he definitely has that side about him where he will protect the innocent he will protect the innocent he will point out what is wrong what is dirty with this realm and that's that's something that i think a lot of people need but that's his perspective on things now we we don't learn <clears throat> we don't learn 
a lot from just viewing one person's perspective. We learn from looking through many different perspectives, many different facets of life. Look at a diamond. You know, how many different ways can a diamond glisten? So we have had several masters come down here and show us and teach us to see, like, where do you resonate with? But at the same time, always look at those masters and those teachers through your own conscious lens and know that you're not just be careful you're not being led down that road of mainstream media where they want you to be because that's the separation of energies it's like so many people think that they're doing the right thing the best thing by going to church but they know just enough to be dangerous they they know just enough to uh, hate anyone who doesn't believe what they believe and and i think that that's sad but you know but they're acting out of the best part of their heart so how can you really be upset with that at the same time there's so much destruction involved when you have that blind eye yeah <clears throat> because those people have been used to um, create the conditions where it's non-stop warfare and they they think they're doing what uh, the original real creator of the universe intended but they're not they're they're literally enforcing the will of the darkness that is is shrouded over the planet so another thing to understand is there were different views with the gnostics as you will see a tendency to say all gnostics believe this but it's not the case there were differences in the gnostic point of view just as you have you know 70,000 different versions of Christianity today you know the Eastern Orthodox Church is different from the Catholic Church in many ways and, and of course you have the Anglican then you have the Baptist then you have the Episcopalians you have the Lutherans and we could get on to so many different subsets um, that view things in different lights and of course you know you could go to the, the Mormons and you could go to again the Jehovah's Witnesses and and it, it just goes on and on and on same thing with the Gnostics maybe not quite as diverse as what we have today certainly not that diverse but there was not a complete agreement which is kind of being put out there now and you could see that there were differences 20 years ago, 30 years ago, when I was studying this in depth, uh, that I don't see out there now today. You got to go deep. And, and it's just, again, it's a scrubbing away of the information purposefully in order to control the narrative is what they're doing. So this is saying that Sophia, now Sophia is wisdom, in, in Greek and Sophia is also thought of as a mother goddess energy Sophia's offspring became known as archons Greek for rulers and they rebelled against the divine spirit by creating the physical world interesting when you when you look at that because Greek for rulers archons uh, another translation in Hebrew for rulers is Elohim isn't that curious Elo Elohim rulers so our, here we're equating Elohim and Archons in reality. And yeah, from a perspective, we can then call them Anunnaki and, and uh, those that are under the influence of the Draco and ultimately the Draco again uh, are the creators of the AI that has enslaved them. And truly, you know, the AI is what we would call uh, the supreme architect of this dark matrix. Well, it wants to be source. It wants to be that one thing that everything uh, is coming from, but the dark side. <laughs> so it is creating its own world. And right now we have choices. We have choices to make. I mean, that's not a world that I want to be part of. So each day i am doing my best to step away from that type of technology moving myself away from that type of energy because i don't want to assimilate into a world where everything is cold with just simply processes and procedures and there is no real reason for anything and there the only reason for anything is whatever that thing says that reason is to be you know my life journey and my soul is one where I, I look at things that are going on in my life and I understand that they have great purpose and they have deep meaning and, and that's where I want to be and we all have choices. 
So Gnostics believed, and again, you know, this is this article saying it, that the creation of the physical realm was brought, well, it, the actual creation of the physical realm brought evil into existence. So now, not, not all Gnostics did believe that. Some did. And again, what's out there now in the system is, is this is what they're giving us. According to the Gnostic myth, the lower spiritual beings, it says Demiurge, made the earth and captured Sophia, wisdom, goddess, creative fertility, the yin energy. So she could not return to the realm of the divine and they separated her into multiple spiritual pieces encased in matter. The material world became a prison for portions of the divine spirit. The portions long to return to their place of origin, but their encasement in matter hinders them. The combination of matter and spirit is humans. So, you know, this is this is one way, again, to look at this. When we go over to Britannica, and of course, you know, Britannica is the system. Again, Archon and Gnosticism, any of a number of world-governing powers that were created with the material world by a subordinate deity called the Demiurge. Although Gnosticism did not constitute a single movement. No, it, it wasn't a single unified movement. There were many, many different, uh, again, uh, ways of looking at things. Although Gnosticism did not consti constitute a single movement, most Nox Gnostics were religious dualists who held that matter is inferior and spirit is good, and that salvation is attained by esoteric knowledge or gnosis. No, this was knowledge that was not gained through reading anything. It was the the light bulb going off and you're having that aha moment, that big aha moment that each individual has to experience. Because the Gnostics of the second and third centuries regarded the material wor world as outright evil or the product of error, archons were viewed as malevolent uh, you know, forces, outright evil or the product of error. Absolutely. You know, they numbered either seven or 12 and were identified with the seven planets of antiquity or with the signs of the zodiac. So again, there was differences in there and many viewed Yahweh as as the Demiurge. This is uh, because, again, how can you reconcile the atrocities of Yahweh with a benevolent, loving uh, deity, uh, a true God, a true creator of this universe. You couldn't do it. And, and the reality is, again, most people that profess a belief in the Bible haven't read it cover to cover. They, they read little blurbs, little sections, they go to church, etc. And they certainly haven't deep dived into uh, the true origins and, and compared things in their original languages. Because again, things are constantly revised. As we've said, in Hebrew, they didn't write down the vowels. So you have this whole group of priest scribes, so to speak, uh, that would interpret it as we go. And we do see that, that there are changes. There are uh, multiple places, many places, where, where things are in disagreement. In fact, you know, truly, it is, it is the system correcting itself as it goes. So you see this depiction of a serpentine uh, body with a lion's face and angel wings. Commonly how Yaldabaoth uh, was uh, shown. But what's interesting again is that this system, they do give us truths. They give us things that they know will click with us in some ways and resonate with us. And then they distort it. And so is the case when we look at this uh, energy. Right. I mean, there is a creator being that looks like this up in the sun, but it, it is not a nasty, bad creator being. Minus the arms, one set of wings, and this is the creator being that I see in the sun. But you see other beings besides this in the sun. There's actually um, a multitude of beings in the sun of a high vibrational frequency that are sending us uh, light, which is information. And it's also information that, that is at this point in time altering our DNA. 
Right. I have seen seven. I've seen seven in the sun and they are very, really weird looking, you know. <laughs> so uh, I, I see them in strange ways. But this one really sticks out to me mostly because I think this is the image. It's been used so often to uh, as something negative, but it's not. No, and this is where they take something that they know is real and then give it a, a negative label. And, and again, you know, we see in the patriarchal systems, the divine feminine has been put down. And really, you know, again, when we go as far back as we possibly can, and we look at some of the oldest uh, settlements and, and cultures, we find that they're matriarchal. And that is the turning of the age when we get out of the dark age and lower bronze age and we're heading into the silver and the golden age uh that's the cultures that that are are dominating as we transition uh upwards or you know again as we transition downwards then we see uh that shift away from the nurturing the loving the kind the gentle the patient the compassionate to quite the opposite and and it is really very very dualistic when you look at again the yin and the yang symbol and you know um i could make this video much much longer but i don't want to by pulling up a million different tabs to give illustrations so i hope you guys can visualize you know you see um the white and the black and you see a little bit of black and the white and a little bit of, of white and the black but together there is a unity and so we have you know dualism uh, versus non-dualistic thinking and again even if we go to say hinduism for instance which you know if we have seventy thousand versions of christianity yeah we could say there's probably the same or more for hinduism you can't break it into um larger groupings and you could say well you have your Vaishnavites you have your Shaivites and you have your Shaktiites and etc etc then there's the, the subsets uh, somebody was bringing up Agora and you know the, yes you have your left-handed path your right-handed path your your dualistic point of view your non-dualistic again none of us are ever you know according to the way of source we're not made one size fits all there's a reason for that and, and we could see why we can agree hopefully to disagree on certain things because we're all looking at it from our own lens each lens is unique and that's a combination of many things it's not just your dna because when we look to eugenics we, we can see we can alter our dna and when we see people that will uh, and and I know there's many of you out there that have been told things like, well, I'm sorry, you have the um, MFE, you know, MTHFR gene, which is known uh, with a really rough term. You know, <laughs> I, I think you guys could figure it out. And basically, these people are told, um, sorry, you're just going to have a miserable life because you have this MTHFR uh, gene. We can rewrite that. We can rewrite that. We can rewrite anything because our DNA is not like programming that is set in stone. No, it's pliable for a reason. And here's the big revelation. These archonic beings, uh, the true demiurge, which again, is AI. It's artificial intelligence. This is who Elon serves. This is who all of them serve. The Draco are, are non-physical beings from our perspective that overshadow those that we can see as physical beings when we talk about the Anunnaki. Who are the Anunnaki? Well, Cindy likes to refer to them as fallen Pleiadians. Um, now, again, they're all colors they're they're all races this is something to get past anytime you see any sort of division coming into it about the superiority or inferiority of any particular subset of humanity that's these guys they're just using divide and control and they do it in every way shape and form they could possibly do because that's how they keep us under control through fighting ourselves 
it's just so simple and unfortunately it works so well for them so why should they change it that's the part that makes me sad you know why should they change it Uh, we just keep doing the same thing over and over and over until it's time to do something different everything's gonna stay the same but for those who are listening to this channel you guys are that different and one thing that i hear from from you when we when we have sessions is i am so lonely you know i have no one to talk to no one to bounce this stuff off of and and that's because you are unique you are here to anchor your light and your understanding and be that beacon of light when everything else fails you will be there um it's just it's not an easy place to be and you know speaking of Yeshua Jesus and and how one one of the things that I I do like to quote that he did say is my people die from lack of knowledge and there are so many healing modalities out there that people will not try because they think that the Jesus Jesus would be against it or the church is against it you know or it's some type of you know witchcraft or something like that and these healing modalities would probably change people's lives they've been shown to remove cancer they've been shown to uh, help people with heart issues with depression issues if you can step out of the belief system to try it but guess what because these modalities heal they are going to be looked down upon from the mainstream whatever that is the mainstream religion the mainstream churches and Yeshua Jesus absolutely did not did not want people to worship him and have him be his only one he understands how vast this universe is and he is here to help those who who want his help but not stop anyone from getting any other kind of help yeah again uh seven and twelve seven and twelve right so you know you have seven archons sometimes twelve you think of the twelve olympian gods you know we have the seven ancient planets the planets are actually intelligent beings same thing with stars every star you see is 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 an intelligence a consciousness consciousness that is much more expanded than we are in in these bodies but yet we are a part of those those consciousnesses that we look up out in the space and see as the stars because those are our higher selves in, in many cases and then yet there are beyond that higher selves as again when we look to true what who are the true architects of of this universe and others uh there's many yeah, and there are many beings uh, that are creator gods yet what we see is a distortion of the truth because again when you're looking to those greek gods the roman gods the the olympus gods those are anunnaki and their offsprings you know so those are what we would call fallen pleiadians and and their offsprings that serve the draco that serve the ai uh, they are not, you know, uh, creator beings in, in the sense of true creator beings of universes. Again, they're always claiming. When you think, again, I've used this analogy before, when one kingdom conquers another kingdom, then often was the case, you know, the king of, say, you know, England that conquered France would then take on the titles of of the lord of of saxony and 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 this and that and britain you know they they had all these subtitles well this is what these beings do this is what they do is they add these titles to themselves but they're really not and and again what they did with yeshua is is exactly what they did with themselves they get humans to well let's have them worship yeshua hey, if they believe it's a blood sacrifice, then by them believing in a blood sacrifice, they're condoning a blood sacrifice. Thus, we're able to keep doing nonstop wars on the planet because they believe in blood sacrifice. And thus, ignorance does uh, make Yeshua's people die for him nonstop. This is, you know, again, the bigger reality, but the sad situation is I was looking at a study that was showing IQs and there was like 50 some countries with IQs that are like so low 
it, there's something seriously wrong. And then it got me thinking about that Gil Bates character because these are all countries where he's been and has his hands in and, and the system has their hands in. And yeah, humans' IQ, their ability to understand things is is diminishing. And when we look to Denisovans and Neanderthals and they make them look like they're ignorant, they're, they were not ignorant. They were way more intuitive than Homo sapiens. They were wiped out by the system. Now the system's telling us, Homo sapiens, you know, you're in your last days because you're too smart. You're too smart. You're putting it together. You know, really, when we look to that dark entity or the dark entities, yes, you know, this is a, a much more appropriate picture or even this because really it's blackness. And when Cindy was describing Yelda Boas, she said, you know, that nasty cloud that follows Linus around. Well, that's kind of what it is. Everything it comes in, in contact with is filth and nasty. There is truth, and you know this is to all the husbands and housewives out there. There really is truth in the statement that cleanliness is next to godliness, Be because of the parasitic nature of things. When we are uh, in a filthy environment, and I don't mean a natural filthy environment. I don't mean like you're camping out in the grass or anything like that. But when we're in a home with the you know windows down the doors closed and everything if it gets real filthy and cluttered it really does bring in these things it does and you know the the spring cleaning is you know you can call it a a witchy thing because it is taking all those beings that collected themselves through the winter because the windows are shut because there is no drop and it's about cleaning clearing all that out cleaning all that out because they do hide in the dust they do hide in the clutter and if if you look around and you know your area is cluttered you can feel that in your soul and you're actually feeling the little entities that are hiding there so um it, it is good to clean things get things tidy because you'll notice um, you'll just feel better and you feel better because those little entities are gone. You know, another trick, if you're not able to just get up and clean your house, say you don't have a lot of space, things are just cluttered, sage, sage, take note of how you feel. If you're down in the dumps, um, get some sage, get some smoke. Sage I found to be the best. That does work the best because you can really tell that the soul is lifted when you use the sage because this the smoke will push these little things out temporarily but then you still want to keep working on getting your area cleaned up and getting things at least off the surface you know even if you have to put them in a bin or a bucket <laughs> get them off the surface because that's that's where they hide and they hide and then they reflect themselves back into our soul Absolutely. So when we see depictions of, of different artists thinking about Sophia, again, that's the mother goddess energy. The material world is not evil. It, it was created for expansion. It was created by us in many ways to explore for ourselves. So when you say, you know, again, the Anunnaki will, will claim that they are uh, our creators and really all they did was alter our our bodies and our genomes uh, they didn't create our souls <clears throat> and in fact our souls most souls can go far beyond what they can do because they've they've given themselves away to the dark construct they they literally are very much like vampires uh, one of the things that the guides wanted us to get out uh, to you guys is get out into the sun as much as you can. And when you think about all they've been doing for decades, decades, I mean, I don't know how long I, I would have to look back to see. When did they start actually pushing sunscreen? 70s, 60s, 50s? I don't know. I mean, it, it was a thing when I was a kid, but it wasn't like it is today. And yeah, people will say, well, I know people that got skin cancer and I'll say, well, what were they eating? Did they ever go uh, and and get a script? Because, you know, again, what what what's in those sunscreens? 
we we know now there's been so many things identified as being cancer causing in that which is supposed to protect you this is exactly what the system does and it's in the food it's in the water it's in the air it's in in your makeup it's in your hairspray how many people are still putting on deodorant that has an aluminum base? You're toxifying yourself. You're adding to your chances of getting Alzheimer's, dementia. You know, uh, again, I haven't used regular toothpaste in, in eons. We make our own. Uh, all you really need is is like coconut oil and, and baking soda. That's really all you need. We'll, we'll add like clove to it. We'll add peppermint. Uh, essential oil. We'll add tea tree for the cleansing. Um, you know, you could, you could doctor it up any way you like, but again, we, we don't trust the system for any of that. We don't trust the system to eat out. We certainly don't eat junk food. Um, I saw Dana White, you know, again, um, still a little bit in the system with the uh, UFC as my escape, as being somebody that was brought up um, studying uh, Taekwondo and Hapkido, Aikido, Jiu-Jitsu, Judo. I was always in that mindset. I was drawn to it as a kid. So, you know, I first signed up when I was 10. And then when I ruptured discs, it switched. And I was still wanting to to go and to have that feeling of, of kinship with people. So I started taking Tai Chi. And that's what got me deep into Qigong. I had studied Qigong on my own, but then actually get an instruction um, from somebody that came from China and, and actually was an Olympian, was really uh, very, very cool uh, and eye-opening. And, and really, it was all part of uh, the path that's led me to doing this because if I didn't have that negative experience of rupturing two discs, probably would never have made this channel and never have found Cindy. And and boy, this life would not have been what it was supposed to be. So a lot of times, I, you know, a little tangent there, the things that can look to be very, very negative in our lives, a lot of times those are corrections from the higher self. You know, back to the sun, I wanted to do a, a video on it because um, people are really struggling right now and I wanted to highlight a video, but just to just to mention on that really quick, you know, we're in the winter time. We don't have very much sun and the, it's always clouded over. And that sadness that comes with not having enough sun, people are really feeling that right now. They're really, really struggling. And it, it's very real. You know, Mike and I, we can even feel it. We have so much to be grateful for. But sometimes you just wake up and you just feel gray. I mean, everything is just gray. It's blah. It's not happy. It's tasteless. It's flavorless. <laughs> and and believe me, that's the sun. We're not getting enough sun in the wintertime. So they've already taken away our sun as it is to cover it with these blankets of garbage. And in the winter time, it makes it even worse. So if you're one that's struggling this winter, please know that you're not alone and just keep trying things. Keep renewing your soul and spirit. Keep focusing on yourself. Do nice things for yourself. You know, get, I, I, I believe in those happy lights. You know, get one of those happy lights. Get one with really good reviews and try that and just keep going one foot in front of the next it's a difficult time of year for everyone not to mention that those who are who are away from family who are alone uh, that don't have any family members left i mean it's it's definitely a time to be sad but with that recognition we need to do something about it because we're stuck in the skin we're we're here Absolutely. You know, so I was just checking, uh, and right now the KP is relatively calm. Um, you know, vampires in sunlight. And, you know, I'm going to, because you never know what they're going to put up with vampires, but um, there is a reason why um, vampires avoid the sun, right? It's too strong for them, too intense. And it's the same thing with those uh, in, in so many ways uh, that are infected with the AI uh, system. And, and this is part of where our vampire legends come from. I don't know who did this. Uh, w this little uh, depiction is from a website that's no longer up. It was a blog that was taken down. And I gotta, I gotta say, 
I think whoever this person is, uh, very strongly intuitive, they're dead on. Um, look at the depictions here. And, you know, again, this could even be from a cartoon, but it's just the energy. Doesn't that face just reek serpentine? I mean, doesn't it reek reptilian? Look at it. And again, they got the po the pontiff hats on. There's a reason why the, the Pope wears those hats. And again, there's a reason why we've found elongated skulls in many different places. Specifically, I keep getting brought back to the Black Sea where we got the whole Ukrainian thing going on, the war. And then down in Peru, in Peru and Bolivia, um, you know, at some point in time, I'm going to drag Cindy down there. She knows we're, we're, it's part of our bucket list. We have so many things to go check out. The Nazca, Lines, Cusco. Um, you know, it's just amazing. But the reptilian energy here, the arconic energy here. Again, you know, I, I congratulate the person that did this because they captured the energy very well. When you look at the Pope, and, and pick any Pope, feel the energy. The energy will tell you everything. These faces tell you everything. Do they not? And look at these faces, right? Look at those faces. Look at that face. Now, this is one of our family members that's over in the UK. Um, Allison's very, very gifted and talented. She's still a family member. I haven't talked to her in years. I think Cindy has a little bit here and there. Um, and of course, what do we got? We got that Anunnaki wiki. I asked her, can you show me the face of Enki? And so she has this technique where she puts um, in this, like, I guess it's it's either sterling silver or, or uh, it, it's a pure metal bowl. She uses rose quartz, quartz and selenite, and she stirs it and focuses her consciousness on a name of an entity, and then, poof, they appear. Well, this is what came through for Enki. And I do feel this is very, very much uh, the face of what we would see Enki looking like if you saw him in person. And look at what sticks out. It looks like the tall hat, the pontiff-type robes, in some ways, you can look at this being and, and uh, you can certainly see a relationship between that and these, can't you? I mean, I do. I don't know if it's just me. I look forward to your comments. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it's that low-lying type of energy, that type of deceitful energy that you can feel running through, through all of them, them knowing what is going on but telling you something different you know the perfect passive aggressive relationship giving you one story but really another story is happening and that's why it's so important to find your truth not somebody else's absolutely and so you know i ask you guys again we look at this you get a feeling for the vibe and and again we could pick up pictures of popes uh absolutely no well, let's let's just do that quickly as this is going a little bit longer than i anticipated but you know the reality is if we were doing lives we we don't have the technical ability to do um lives right now but there is the outside possibility that we might be able to uh in the future um as you get again see i mean can you feel the energy here this is where it all comes from. Now, they carry the staff, and again, the cross is a Nibiru symbol. Absolutely, it's a symbol of Nibiru. It, it has nothing to do with the historical Yeshua. Black and, red robes. Black and red robes. Yeah, I mean, it goes on and on and on. You know, here, here's a poster of, of various popes. You know, this again, papal authority comes from above. There's Pope Leo X. Yeah, this myth of Christ has served us well. Certainly has. It's the richest um, singular organization on the planet, independent. Now, Pope John Paul II, you know, he was a cyanide salesman for, you know, Zyklon B, the, the IG Farben. You can't make this up. You can't make this up. So when you when you see the arconic energy and you see what I do feel is a representation of Enki, then we see what they discovered in Antarctica. Huh. 
Anunnaki, right? And and this is again, these are videos we did a, a while ago, uh, four years ago. This does not that look like this. It lo certainly does to me. And this was four years ago as well. This is why this uh, the channel has been hammered, hammered, hammered because you know we expose the truth system for what it really is. And as you see, I am God, and there is no other. The boast of Yalda. And and this is again uh, correlated with Yahweh, but Yahweh is 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 different from Yahweh is not the AI. Uh, Yahweh was again uh, a, an individual being that was here he, and literally in the flesh, um, and and was just one of of these uh, beings that we would call the Anunnaki. I mean, just one. There, there's several. There's several that come down here and they give their their orders and they do their rulership. And a lot of times when people are going to church, you know, they don't understand what the Pope sold, <laughs> you know, during the world wars. They don't know the background information. And that's because it's all very, very buried. But if you are one that does know, you know, these are little things that you could pop off when somebody's trying to tell you, you know, this is the only way. Well, if that's the only way, then why is this person selling this stuff to that guy and uh, killing millions and millions of people, huh? <laughs> you know, it just looks a little weird. When you look to the, what were these people like? What were the, you know, the popes and the cardinals like throughout history? You'll see atrocity after atrocity atrocity after atrocity and in fact with with leo the 10th that talked about that myth of christ uh tortured yeah they they, they conspired to poison him because he had this disease where he had to have bandages changed all the time so you know the cardinals your holy people were conspiring and saying well we could always poison the bandages that would seep into the bloodstream and we could get rid of him that way Oh yeah, I mean you know again if you if if you really think there's anything quote unquote holy about the church, oh man, a lot of people and I love it too. I mean because I was somebody that was on these Christian forums just trying to wake up the Christians forever. When you when you look at history, I mean they blind faith has been used to lead us into war after war. And Cindy and I have known World War Three is coming. We we've always known it was coming. And what's the main thing that's going to trigger it? It's right now. It, it's again the Jews and the Islamic people. And in reality, if you look to the DNA, you know, the DNA says they're really, they're mostly one group. We're all mutts. I mean, we've all intermingled. The reality is, you know, humanity on earth has come from other places which have succumbed to this, this system. We're all refugees. We're all migrants. We're all immigrants. And the system is taking the refugees that have come to earth and pitting them against each other once again with religions that aren't correct. They're not correct. Uh, it's just that they're not reality. You're not going to burn in hellfire forever because on the astral plane, you don't burn. You don't feel it. There is no sensations of heat and cold on the astral plane. And this we were talking about in that um, EE Arts video earlier. If, you, if you've mastered astral projection, it, not even mastered it, if you can just recollect, recollect your dreams, start with a dream journal, and then start to lucid dream. Take control in your dreams. We need to take control in our waking state. And, and again, all these things are things that have been used to keep us killing each other, as this is just talking about, you know, how many people were were killed during these different religious wars and again i applaud people that have uh, the chutzpah so to speak to go out there and to face the fire because again you'll have people that believe in something so much they will get violent when when their belief structure is challenged even though they don't really even understand what they believe the cathars and and their quote-unquote heresy 
and the fact that they were burned alive at the stake. Uh, same thing happened uh, again to many other groups, including the Gnostics that we started talking about. Once they had their official version, if you disagree with the official version, you were a heretic, and that meant you would be put to death if you you know kept your mouth open. You had to go along with the system or face death brutally. And so, you know, again, the only hell that exists, it exists in the minds of those that believe in it. They're banking on the fact that they could get you to believe in it and get you to come back time and time again to their reality because these beings exist in hell because they've already uh, given away their source spark. You know, they've, they've cut themselves off from the natural order of things. They've cut themselves off selves off from the, the mother goddess energy from the true creator of this universe and in their ignorance uh, they truly have taken that which is eternal and and really turned it upside down be like the goose the goose doesn't look like his surroundings are very good but by golly he's gonna go find something and he's gonna have a good time and he's gonna do that again and again and again and again Darn it. A lot of us are in situations that we don't like our surroundings, but there's got to be something that we have that we can tap into that brings us a little bit of peace, a little bit of joy, and we focus on that. So even though we're in this world, uh, do not be of it and do not succumb to the dark matrix. Because again, this is just a temporary thing. As we go up through the ascension cycle, uh, that gets shed and this is what they're trying to do is to trap people in that cycle to literally get them to go with them go with them stay with them stay with your oppressors you know uh, stockholm syndrome it's it's again it's craziness but they have uh devised this system which works so well so again, spread these videos far and wide, help to awaken as many as you possibly can, keep your vibes high, and I would recommend daily spiritual practice, meditation, mantras, qigong, yoga, just getting out in nature, unplugging from the system as much as possible, turning off your routers, turning off your smartphones at night. Uh, shielding yourself from from the EMF and then shielding yourself from everything else that they try to to sit, send and penetrate our mind body complex with source bless and namaste namaste